So let's go on to the first question I've got for you guys. Uh, basically, were you Doctor Who fans before you'd done the class? Uh, funny enough, um, I consider myself a bit of a geek. Yeah. Um, I've always been into gaming. Uh, as you can tell by my Mass Wee. Effect shirt here. <laughs> um, but funny enough, I was never really had an into Doctor Who. None of my friends were particularly into it. Um, and, you know, when you're growing up, you sort of get into what your friends are into. Yeah. And um, so I never really had an into Doctor Who. Uh, I'd seen it every so often. I'd seen Christmas specials. Yeah. Um, but it was never really something that caught my attention um, yeah. until we both got this job and then it was like, oh, well, I should actually start watching Doctor Who because yeah. I feel like I should have anyway. Um, and then just become a fan since then. Yeah. Cool. I mean, same for me as well. Like before the before class, we was always familiar growing up. I'd probably watched a few episodes. Yeah. But um, until we got sort of cast the class, that's when we had to do like specific research and really look into Doctor Who and, you know, the sort of vibe and tone yeah. that Doctor Who brings. And, you know, ever since doing our research, I mean, I speak for Greg as well, I feel like we are big Doctor Who fans, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah. have you got a favourite Doctor Who moment? Like, or have you got a favourite Doctor? I've got a favourite Doctor. <laughs> I might get in trouble for this. But um, I have to choose between either Matt Smith and David Tennant. That's for me. OK. Yeah. Good shout. Uh, yeah, and again, just because he seems the iconic Doctor for me, whether it's just because I was growing up and it was the height of its popularity, yeah. But it was David Tennant. Yeah. Um, however much we love Peter Capaldi, and he is fantastic. Yeah. And he's an amazing Doctor. It's just uh, when I think of the Doctor, I just think of David Tennant. So, so any favourite moment, any Doctor Who favourite moments that you've got from watching Doctor Who? Well, I've got to say, yeah, I've got to say, what the real turning point for Doctor Who for me when I realised that I was a fan was uh, was Blink. Yeah. Uh, so seeing that episode and seeing the Weeping Angels and seeing. The, the clever storytelling and that really sold the yeah. concept of the show for me so that was yeah, yeah. same with you as well Faddy yeah um, so Patrick Ness wrote the class um, did you know of any of his work prior to it did you go and watch A Monster's Call like have you been to see it since it come, come out yeah we went to um, an early screening for it didn't we um, oh wow and that was pretty special yeah uh, it's, if you haven't seen A Monster Calls it is fantastic. It really You'll probably cry a lot. It depends what mood you're in. If you want I'd to trust, cry, go watch it. Trust though. me, like <laughs> me and Dale, we, we do a movie review. And trust me, I was weeping now. It's hard. It's hard. It's to hard watch. not to. It's it's I. It's one of those films that I definitely recommend seeing, but I'm not sure I could watch again. No. For a, for a, at least a little while. So why would you do that to yourself? It would. <laughs> it's, it's, if you just want to cry, if you think right, that's it. I've just got to go for a for moment. Crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? But um, so yeah, you never read any of his. I'd, n I'd never. Beforehand, no? no, I'd never read any Patrick no. Patrick stuff. Um, uh, but uh, loads of my friends, once they heard that I was working with Patrick Ness, yeah, um, <laughs> quite um, like, wow. starstruck by that. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, it was it was an honour working with him. He was he was fantastic to work with. Brilliant. So the class is set at Coal Hill School, Shoreditch. Um, it's been uh, a staple since 1963 of Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> what was your secondary schools like? As you were growing up. I mean, there was definitely not a board with everyone that's died on it. Definitely, for sure. <laughs> um, it, was, it was... My school was a, bit, it was a bit mad as well, but compared to, obviously, Coe Hill, it was nothing like that. Yeah. So. But my secondary school was just sort of... It wasn't the most well-behaved school, but it wasn't a bad school either. No. So. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just a normal secondary school, I guess, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so our upbringings are obviously completely, completely different. different. <laughs> uh, I, went, I went to a grammar school in Bournemouth. Oh, oh, God, yeah. oh well, yeah, um, totally, yeah. A boys', a boys school. Uh, so that was my secondary school, and I was always super well-behaved. Um, I don't know if that surprises any of you. I was a goody two-shoes. Um, I think I got detention once because I skipped PE in year eight. That was that's <laughs> rebel. <laughs> only that, yeah, you know that's my claim to <laughs> rebellion. Um, but yeah, so that was my upbringing. Obviously, yeah. nothing compared to Coal Hill. But um, are there any yeah. similarities between your schools, Coal Hill, your schools? Any similarities whatsoever? I had a teacher like Miss Quill. Ooh. Oh, to, to be fair, a lot ruthless. of teachers like Miss Quill. Yeah. So did I. Yeah. To be fair, I had um, a pretty like harsh but sexy teacher. Oh, <laughs> come, come on, come on, Miss Quill's pretty sexy. It is. 
definitely. So, Greg, um, you have said that Charlie is socially awkward and tries to be the best version of himself um, he can be. And, Fadi, you've said that Ram is cocky, a loving guy who wants to be the best. So, uh, what elements of Charlie and Ram's personalities have you both found difficult to play? Okay, that's interesting. Um, for Charlie, it's trying to find that balance of likability and um, royalty, because I find the two don't often go hand in hand. Mm. Um, I, th I think a lot of people uh, see the upper classes as being quite uh, distant from themselves. Yeah. Um, so, trying to find, uh, trying to be a prince, but also be sort of the hero or anti-hero of the story, however you want to see him, um, and still be likable, yeah. uh, was tricky for me. Uh, I was, I was fighting the early stages of preparing the character in rehearsals. I was really struggling with the balance of likability, poshness, yeah. royalty, um, alien as well, because he has to be an alien prince yeah. at the same time. So it was trying to find a balance that worked within the, con uh, within the uh, framework of the show. Uh, so that was really tricky for me, but hopefully something came of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say for me as well, it was like trying to find the balance of being liked at the same time as being cocky, which is very difficult. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of my character in the writing as well, it sort of came across that. In the early episodes, he, wanted, he was supposed to come across quite arrogant and cocky yeah. and not sort of someone you can approach. And at the same time, I wanted him to be likable. So they was trying to find that balance of not being too cocky and have some sort of vulnerability and something that other people can connect to too who aren't as cocky as you. Yeah. You see? Good answer. Thank you. I like That's it. Very good answer. <laughs> very good, yeah. So what's been, what's been the most testing time for both of your characters and how do you feel they've overcome these tests? Okay, well, um, I'm without giving too many spoilers. If yeah. I don't want to spoil the show if you haven't seen it. But um, I, I assume everyone here has watched class. Everyone's nodding gingerly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. uh, still, I'll try, like, I'll try to keep the spoilers uh, to a minimum. Um, for Charlie, it was... Oh, it's, it's, I guess the premise of his whole journey in the show is <laughs> relocating planets and yeah. <laughs> trying to be a human. Is, um, that's an interesting journey for anyone to go through. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and to be involved with the Doctor and all of that, it's, it's, it's huge. It's unlike anything, I think. Uh, I, th I think when people see aliens in a show, they immediately assume that they're aware of other aliens. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't the case for us, apart from the Shadowkin. We, had, we were aware of them, but... I don't think we would we knew that there was this huge world out there. There was yeah. the Doctor. Was so even for him, the, just the fact of that there are aliens out there, there are other planets with other, there are humans yeah. that are alive. That's a huge journey and big thing for him. So uh, yeah, I think that's that's a lot of where Charlie's uh, progression comes from. It starts yeah. off from that. So repeat, that? repeat that. Yeah, basically it was. Um, what has been the most testing time for both of your characters, and how do you feel you've over and how do you feel they've overcome the test? Well, I mean, if you're familiar with class, you'd know my character suffers a lot of trauma from yeah. beginning to end. So, just sort of from the first episode, from the first moment he loses his, um, I won't say too much. He sort of has to. He so he loses a lot in the first episode. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And it just sort of you know his journey of trying to find himself and. You, you know, put himself together after being yeah. this sort of like really full of himself young man to now sort of he doesn't even know who he is right now. He's just really trying to find. And in a way, I feel like he's trying to fit in as well. Like yeah. it's kind of like in the beginning, Charlie was trying to fit in with our gang. But at this stage, I feel like personally, my character's trying to fit in with them for comfort. Yeah. And just he needs them as much as, you know, they need him. So, so a lot, lot of emotions going around on a lot set. Of a lot of emotions. Oh, yeah, yeah we, we, uh, Patrick didn't. Uh, didn't shy away, shy away from it, no. No, well, no Patrick doesn't. No, uh, so, um, so what other characters in class do you feel have had a connection with either your character or, or just yourself, really, in general, like away from playing your characters? So do you feel you've had a connection to any other characters? I mean, for me, I would personally say Tanya. Yeah. Um, 
a surprise in, well not in the beginning because obviously sort of my relationship was supposed to be with April and a lot of people who'd watched the show especially from the first couple of episodes before any relationship happens they assume that me and Tanya just because of our chemistry and our relationship that something would go forward and yeah I'd say my relationship with Tanya is probably yeah the one for the me one, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, th I don't think it can be anyone else apart from Mateusz yeah uh, <laughs> Jordan <laughs> Uh, just because I got on so well with him yeah. in real life as well. I mean, we all got on super well together, but we were obviously, Jordan and I had to spend the most amount of time. Yeah. Uh, we were always with each other. Um, and having to go through first, like doing a sex scene together, yeah. which was uh, it's first for both of us. Um, Tough. It wasn't, it wasn't actually. It Awkward. Was, it, it, everyone made it really easy. Yeah. Um, it was a bit funny looking back yeah. on it, <laughs> uh, being in like these skin-colored, tight pants, <laughs> dressing gowns, walking yeah. on set, and having everyone being like, "Okay, it's happening now. Oh. <laughs> We're about to get into bed. It's gonna go down." <laughs> yeah, that was a um, very interesting day. But um, yeah, J Jordan Mateusz's character, Mateusz, he's um, it, he's taught Charlie a lot, and yeah. I've learned a lot from Jordan as well. So that's a nice bit of parallel. Oh, so Miss Quill is my favourite in the oh, class. Thanks. Ruthless, That's, you know what I mean? Like uh, she, don't blame you. Don't blame That's me. it, full of anger no, and everything, all round badass. But um, what has been the most favourite scene with her that you've liked, that you've loved? Leave us, we're decorating. That's my favourite moment from her ever, <laughs> yeah. just in general from the show. <laughs> the way she says it and just, I oh, just love it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's probably my favourite moment yeah. from this quill, yeah. Um, it was, for, for me, it was in, it was in the uh, classroom when she was getting... Um, when, is that when she threw the stapler? Yeah, the yeah, stapler, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a funny day, wasn't it? I was going to say that, because the actual, the actual scene itself, the way it was shot, it was just, like, so intense. Yeah. And then just out of nowhere, she just, like... And I remember when we was actually doing that scene, like they cut straight before she said something like inappropriate. Really? But she kept like... She was just riffing. She yeah, was just she was just making living. stuff up at the time, just coming up with these like crazy things. It was so funny to watch her film it. But I remember at, in the actual edit that they chose, they cut right before she swore, I think, or she was going <laughs> to hang him up by his... But yeah, no. Very intimidating character then. Very, on set yeah. and, and on. She's wonderful, by yeah. the way, obviously. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, so... Basically, uh, so the class has got gore and scares in it. Um, I found it refreshing for a Doctor Who spin-off. Um, what do you both think of these elements um, being added into the series? And what have you found fun about them? Have you found them testing at any point while filming? Yeah, I've loved doing all the, yeah. the green screen stuff, yeah. all the gory stuff. There was one particularly gory scene for me. I mean, you had to do quite a bit of it. Oh, yeah, you had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there was one in episode two it was actually really early on in filming, so I think we filmed episode two and three first for some yeah. reason. I can't remember why we did that. That's weird. Um, there's a reason for it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was episode two. It was like one of the first scenes I ever filmed. Okay. Um, and there's the... Oh, I don't want to say too much, but someone's skin gets ripped off and thrown against the wall. And we had one chance to do it because yeah. this like made-up skin was uh, like super covered in this like sticky blood and if it got on your clothes it wasn't coming off oh, no. um, and it was like near the end of the day and we had to get, do this shot so we sort of like ah, screaming 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 trying to be as afraid as possible and then someone saying three two one duck <laughs> <laughs> the skin flies against the wall and blood splatters everywhere and i think we got it in the one but so that was a fun day it's really good fun testing yourself with all that yeah, sort of stuff I and it just to have a human skin lying on the floor in front of, front of you I don't with, think with, with hairs and freckles and stuff it's, I don't think I'd have the stomach it's pretty, going, it was pretty gross action. yeah it was <laughs> it, pretty no, realistic no yeah no even for me as well like I, the, there was a lot of gore for my character a lot a lot of blood um, so you can imagine every time we do a take yeah. I have to put on more blood on my face and just uh, more blood and more blood and more blood and I remember there was a day where because the way we filmed it it was, it was just backwards, so there was a day where I actually had to... I'd done the blood, then I had another scene where my hair was... Because I had two looks. One was, like, the posh look, and one was, the, like, the messy look. Oh, OK. And I think this point was the messy look, and then I got the blood on my face, and then I had to take off the blood and then blow-dry my hair straight on my hair to get more blood and then get into the shower. And it was just really weird. Like, I just had to just keep getting topped up with blood every 
literally every day. Oh. And obviously you remember the leg scene. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend in the first episode. Oh, man. So, yeah, there was a lot you of You go blood. through it, don't you? Yeah. There was a lot of <laughs> Well, so, so Ram and I, so it's Ram and April, you know, Charlie and Matthias. Um, what feelings do you both have on their relationships um, that were built uh, through the season? And do you feel like they will be developing stronger maybe as, as the seasons go on or a season goes on? Um, yeah, for, for me, um, what, being able to given being able to be given the opportunity to play uh, a gay relationship um, was first of all an honour um, and also not as challenging as I thought it would be. Yeah, I thought they'd be because uh, I mean I think doing any relationship is challenging. Yeah, uh, on screen you've got to really have a, a connection with the person that you're you're playing opposite. Otherwise, I think you can tell straight away. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of worried going into it. Would I like this guy that I'm playing opposite? Yeah. Will I like this guy that I have to get in bed with? Um, will my wife like him? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and just meeting Jordan on the day, we got we got on straight away. Yeah. And we were like, we both said to each other, we were both we were really worried about. What the other so you were trying to put each be. other at ease and trying to cut, you know, help each other through that yeah, yeah, yeah. situation. And, um, no, we just got on like a house on fire and we're really good mates now, still. And so I just couldn't have asked for anyone better, yeah. really. We, it was so easy working with Jordan. It really was, so. Um, for me, I'd say my relationship with April happened kind of quickly because of what happened to my girlfriend, I would say. Yeah. It was sort of like a, a void. There was a hole in his life that yeah. he needed to fill. And I think that kind of explains why he sort of rushed into it. Yeah. Um, not knowing if this is exactly the right person or what he wanted. And I think during that process, he started to, to catch feelings for this person when in actual fact, she didn't like him as much. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that's what it was, where his girlfriend was missing and he needed he needed to find someone to sort of help him move on, and he yeah. thought it would be um, April. Yeah. Um, and I think he does really like her, obviously, but I feel like he's really confused as to what exactly he wants. Yeah. Because of what happened to Rachel. Yeah. Some deep stuff, man. You know what I mean? Deep, it deep. is deep. It's good. It's good though. It's what brings the characters all to life, doesn't it? And it yeah. gives you that connection. Yeah. Um, so that's a bit lighter. So you wanted to be a footballer, Faddy, when you was growing up. Um, obviously, it didn't happen. Yeah. Or, if, or you telling me did it happen? What in real football, life? Yeah, real life. You? Um, he, no, he, I he actually, could, I yeah, actually. You could have done. You yeah, were doing I, really I, well. I went up to semi-professional. I went. I played for a football team. I was like, the next year I would have started getting paid. Um, and then I got cast in a film when I was like 16, 17, called My Brother the Devil, where I played a lead in. Yeah. And just the experience of me being on set every day filming for this film just sort of made me fall in love with acting, and I just sort of had to choose. Yeah. Choose Either between one. the two. Yeah. So did you enjoy it when you had got to show your football skills off? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I loved it. It was actually the first day of filming. Yeah. Um, where we had to do all the football scenes and we filmed two sides of the story. So the first half was me um, playing really badly after I'd lost my leg. And yeah. you know, every time the ball would come to me I'd miss it, taking shots, I'd miss it, and I swear to god I kid you not, we was running around for like half of the day, six hours doing that and then the next half of the day they wanted me to perform oh. <laughs> so after I've just been running for six hours they actually wanted me to do some good stuff now and I was just yeah. like I swear to god I was so tired the next day I wish my makeup eyes was here Sarah I was like crawling on the floor <laughs> because I couldn't I couldn't walk honestly like my legs were finished ice bath all chill of that, out that's all it, of that man. deep heat yeah what you? so obviously Greg, I'm going to touch on your YouTube gaming channel, my man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Go on then, if you dare. It's, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Uh, it's, it really isn't, but no. <laughs> thank you. How, what, what, kind of, what, what games are you liking at this current moment? We've just had the Switch come out. Oh, don't even. Don't even. I so want the Switch. And I so just want down Zelda. there. They've got some down there, Greg. Oh, don't tell <laughs> me that. They've actually got some down there. <sighs> down at game. That. So, yeah, someone someone sponsored me a Switch or something. <laughs> no, I re I, I'm desperate to get a Switch. And yeah. yes, um, my YouTube channel is it's me just being an ass, really. Literally, that's all it is, me playing games and pretending to be funny. So basically, what, you, what are you currently like into away from the games you're putting out? Are you going oh to other games? Oh, or? yeah. The thing is, I find when you're on YouTube, you can play a game on YouTube 
but it's a very different experience to actually just relaxing and playing a yeah. game. It's completely different. There's, um, because you kind of have to be focusing on commentating, on the, how you're going to edit the video. Yeah. There's lots of different things to think about. So I like to put certain videos on my YouTube channel and certain videos just to enjoy on my own. So at the moment, what am I doing? I'm playing, um, playing Spec Ops The Line because that was uh, on Steam sale or something. Yeah. Um, I'm playing Stardew Valley. Yeah. Brilliant game, by the way. Indie game, if anyone's played it. It's pretty cheap on Steam. Stardew Valley, definitely recommended. Um, so, Fatty, you don't play games at all? None of these games, no. Like, I what play games? He's a loser. Um, I actually, I play like Call of Duty. FIFA. I actually don't play FIFA, believe it or not. Wow. I used to, but I'm not good at it, so I don't play it. I stay yeah. away from things yeah. I'm not Scrub. good at. Um, <laughs> but actually, my friend Dan brought me an Attack of the Titans, which I'm playing at the moment. Yeah. Attack mm. on Titans has a game. I don't know if anyone knows, but it's actually really, really good. So I was a big fan in the anime, so yeah. I bought the game. Oh, wow. So you'll be hooking up with these guys that have come yeah, down yeah, to the show. Yeah, for sure. I think right, I actually yeah. saw one, and I got so excited. Is <laughs> I think we've got the voice actors as well. Yeah, that's what the voice actors are. Yeah, the voice actors are. Yeah, want to meet them. So, Mikasa. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, basically, I've seen on on the interweb that um, the, they're saying the class won't be back for another season, really? which I had to bring up. I don't okay. like it because it's jobs that we're talking about. At the end of the day, we're not talking yeah. about you know what I mean. Just a show that's going off air. Um, can you shed any light on whether there's any progression in a season two of Class coming? Mm. Wow, wow, wow. It's coming out in uh, America on 15th of April, yeah. which is a big thing because obviously there's yeah. a huge fan base for Doctor Who over in America. Um, and it's coming out. So Doctor Who comes out at 8 or 9, depending on where you are in America. And then Class comes out straight after. So that's really, really cool uh, next month. Um, so I think around then we'll start getting more of, I more of an idea. There's, there was some, but, there was some stupid yeah. rumors or something, the, yeah. the mirror or something. You can confirm that was a rumor. Yeah. Um, oh, it was, it was completely as, false. As far as we know, we haven't been told. Like we would have been told if it had been cancelled, but it hasn't yeah. so far. I think they're waiting to see what it does in America um, before they make any confirmations. So fingers crossed in America, it's sort of. Well, fingers yeah. crossed here as well, because it's I've got a big fan base here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone. But that's the thing. I don't like it, it's it's big here, but I just I don't know. I don't want to get political. But, yeah. It's cool. Um, there's, there's still a lot of optimism behind. Yeah, the, yeah, that, yeah. Actually, that the, the driving thought is that yeah, we're looking forward to a series two. It's just not, not been confirmed yet. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, one more question I've got for you guys before we cut it. Uh, basically, um, what is next for the pair of you individually? for acting? Have you got any projects coming up that you can talk about? Or anything in general you're really excited about? Maybe a new game yeah. coming out on your YouTube channel? <laughs> or maybe something else away from Well, at the moment, acting. I think, well, for me, um, especially with the way sort of class is going on, where it's not been confirmed, we yeah. sort of, the work we choose has to sort of be limited. We can't really to pick on something long term, just yeah. in case, obviously, class gets picked up. So we're just both in the auditioning process, sort of, you know, looking for temporary work at the moment. And then hopefully after May is when we can really start working, it. depending on class, yeah. um, we can really start working properly and looking for other, you yeah. know, jobs, so. Yeah, auditions are pretty crazy at the moment. Very yeah. crazy pipe, some, yeah. Some uh, irons in the fire, but yeah. apart, from, apart from that, nothing confirmed yet, so can't oh, say anything. Irons in the fire, did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Oh. Oh. I dropped that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all we've got time for, guys. Uh, thank you ever so much for coming on this stage and uh, thank thank entertaining you, me, interviewing you. Thank <laughs> you, buddy. <laughs> thank you very much for everyone being here. Fadi El Said, Greg Austin. Thank, thank you, you very guys. much, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.